Next question I received, Pastor Justin, how does one find their purpose? What is my purpose? How do I walk in my purpose? This is a great question. Here's the principle I want to give you. My purpose is to glorify God. That's the principle. Everybody grab your Bibles. Go to Colossians chapter 3. I want you to see this so you know I'm making it up. My purpose is to glorify God. Purpose is not seasonal. We were created for one purpose. How we fulfill that purpose is how we grow. But we were created all to do one thing. My purpose is to glorify God. Colossians 3, 18 through 25. I like the way the message puts it. You'll see another translation on the screen. Just follow along with me. Wives, understand and support your husbands by submitting to them in ways that honor the master. Husbands, go all out in love for your wives. Not, do not take advantage of them. Let me pause here. I'm not talking about like husbandry and, and wife stuff to, like in this, but I want you to see here, when we talk about all these other things, I think husbands, we miss out on that one part of the text. Do not take advantage of your wife. Go all out in love for them. Amen, somebody. Go all out in love for your wives. Don't take advantage of them. Children, do what your parents tell you to do because this delights the master to no end. Parents, but don't come down too hard on your children or you'll crush their spirits. Servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters. Don't just do the minimum to get by. Do your best. Work from the heart for your real master, God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come to your inheritance. And keep in mind, the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. The servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible, but being a follower of Jesus does not cover up bad work. I love this because the writer in the message translation explains it so well. Being a wife is not your purpose, but it is a way you can fulfill your purpose to glorify God. I'm going to pause there. That just sounds so good to me. I'm going to say it again. Being a wife, being a husband is not your life's purpose. It is a way to fulfill your purpose to glorify God. Amen, somebody. I'm talking to people in the place and on the screen so that you're mad at me because your whole life's purpose has been lived to be a really good wife, to be a really good husband, to be a really good parent. That is not your purpose. It is just a way you are fulfilling your life's purpose to glorify God. There is nothing wrong with being that or not being that because our goal is not to be a wife, a spouse, a pastor, a leader, a business owner. Our goal is to glorify God. My grandma put it like this. If when you give the best of your service, I wish I had somebody, telling the world that Christ has come, where? At work, at church, at home, in the streets, at the mall, on my social media, I give the best of my service, not just for an hour on Sunday. But anytime I get a chance, I want someone to know that if you want to meet Jesus, you can call my phone. And God tells us in verses 23 through 25, God says whatever we do, whatever position we have in our lives, we are called to glorify God. That means our work is done for the Lord, not for money or for a grade. Our work is done for the Lord. And when you give God your best, he will ensure you always have everything you need to please him. He's selfish. Come on, talk back to me, y'all. He's a selfish God. And he's going to ensure you have everything you need to ensure that you can worship him. Now, it seems strange that that's our purpose. But what makes it unique is we all, 1 Corinthians 12, have been given different gifts to do the same thing. (laughs) Woo! And we have different callings and titles and gifts to do the same thing. So I am not going to hate on your gift And you ought not hate on my gift because our purpose, we get distracted from purpose when we begin to get frustrated with who's got a different gift. I can't do what you can do. You can't do what I can do. But if we work together, we can make sure the devil doesn't get done what he wants to do. I wish I had a witness in here. The reason the devil wins so much is that we've gotten distracted in competing with how saved we are that we don't go out and tell somebody in a dying world how to be saved from the sin that you're in. I don't like that you speak in tongues. I don't like that you interpret. Work together. Whew. 
I don't like that you have the gift of faith. I don't like that you have the gift of interpreting dreams. Work together. I don't like that you have the gift to preach. I don't like that you have the gift to sing. Work together. I don't like that you have the gift to be a deacon. I don't like that you have the gift to be a preacher. Work together. And if all of God's children realize our purpose is not to build a church, our purpose is not to build your home, our purpose is to glorify God, and God will do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask, think, or imagine according to the the power that's already at work in you. Your purpose is to glorify God. Jeremiah chapter 1. Let me show you this. Jeremiah chapter 1. This is my call narrative. I love this text. Look at Jeremiah's purpose. He hated it, but look what it did. Jeremiah 1. The word of the Lord came to me. I chose you. Hallelujah. Before I formed you. That's a whole word right there. Before you were made, I chose you. Then before you were made, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah sounded a lot like us. Oh, Lord, I don't want to do it. I don't know what to say. I'm young. They don't like me. Then the Lord said, don't say. It's amazing that Jeremiah's first concern was not what God said over him. Jeremiah's first concern is what people will think about him. How many times have we been distracted from purpose because we are more concerned about what others will say about your gift instead of trusting that God says, I chose you before you were even a thought in your parents' room. I set you apart. I appointed you. But I am more concerned about people who are so insecure in their gift that don't like the purpose that you gave them, God, that I'm more concerned about people who don't like themselves that I'm starting to fall out of love with me because people who don't like themselves don't want me because the worst thing that's happened in a world full of inauthenticity is authentic people. The scariest thing to this world It's people who love God so much that I'm choosing to be myself even though you hate yourself because you want me to have a pity party about how sad you are about what God's called you to be. But I've gotten to a point in my life, forget what you think about me. I have some stuff of the essence that I've got to tell the world about a dying Savior. I've got to tell the world about a God who loved me that your insecurity cannot make me fall out of love with me. God set me apart. I wish I had somebody. God called me. God appointed me. God selected me. God formed me. God called. Am I talking to anybody in the building that God is reminding you, don't you dare sit down on what he put in you. God set you apart. So you here with purpose, on purpose, doing what God needs you to do. So the question you ask is, is what I'm doing glorifying God? If not, don't do it. No, 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 no. Like, don't, if you got to ask yourself that question, you probably shouldn't do it. Come here. Uh-uh, come here. Like, oh, my God, this text message, is it going to glorify God? If you got to ask, you probably shouldn't send it. Go into this bar. Is it going to glorify God? If you got to ask, you probably shouldn't do it. I'm about to slap them silly. Is this going to glorify God? If you got to ask, you probably don't need to do it. That email I'm going to send to my coworker, that home I'm going to go visit at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh-uh, come here. Uh-uh. I'm all up in y'all's DMs. You came in mine, I'm back in yours. That, the things that you do, is it going to glorify God? Some of us are not called to preach. People just said you look nice. Is this glorifying God? Some of you are not called to the position. Is this glorifying God? Revelation 22, 18 through 19 says this. I testify, I, try, I testify to everyone who hears the words of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add plagues to you that are written into this book. If you take away the words from this book, God will take away a share of the tree of life. If it's not going to glorify God, don't do it. So I want you to ask yourself in the areas where you are, where God has put you, where God has selected you, how can you glorify God in your daily life? What is one thing you can do to be a light in your workplace, at school, at your home? Glorify God because your purpose is to glorify God.